our analysis in this case will involve only event pair sets. Recall that the RM event pair sets have been created for us by the response matching features. It is also possible to match events in SDF. If your situation requires event matching not provided by response matching, see the documentation for details. Definitions related to event pair sets are exactly analogous to those for event sets. First, we will define an event pair table to display just the data we want to see. The format is identical to the event table definition format, but begins with event pair table, followed by the table name. For each event property, there are two corresponding event pair properties, one for each event in the pair. We append the numbers 1 and 2 to the event property name to indicate these properties. If we look at the default event pair table, for example, we can see code 1, time 1, and trial time 1, as opposed to code 2, time 2, and trial time 2. For our table, we have a custom event property block which is assigned a value for stimulus events. Since the stimulus event is the first event in each event pair, we use block 1. Likewise, we can use color 1, position 1, and time 1 to display information about the stimulus. To display what the response was, we can use the event code for the response, code 2, and the time of the response, time 2. Finally, we use the special event pair property time diff, which gives the time difference between the times of the two events in the pair. After reanalyzing, we can view the event pair sets using our new table. If the data includes practice trials, you will see these trials in the set RM all. We can make a new event pair set to exclude these trials. Defining event pair sets is analogous to event sets. It begins with the set name. Unlike event sets, event pair set definitions must include a parent set in parentheses. Another difference is the use of a double colon to indicate an event pair set. The set condition is an expression involving event pair properties rather than event properties. In this case, we want pairs where the stimulus block property is main. After reanalyzing the set main excludes the practice trials. Now we want to divide up our data into congruent and incongruent stimulus response pairs. That is, cases where the appropriate response matches the position of the box on screen, as opposed to cases where the appropriate response does not match the position of the box on screen. So we are interested in red boxes on the left being grouped with blue boxes on the right as congruent pair sets and red boxes on the right should be grouped with blue boxes on the left. First we make an event pair set for the congruent pairs using the appropriate condition. Since all of the stimuli must be either congruent or incongruent, we can define the incongruent set as any member of our main pair set that is not congruent. Note that in SDF we use the words AND, OR, AND NOT in contrast to PCL which uses ampersand, pipe and exclamation mark in Boolean expressions. Now we can reanalyze and take a look to make sure the event pair sets look correct. When we print our formatted data to an output file, it is possible that you will want to print separate tables, one for the congruent set and another for the incongruent set. However, you may also want to make a single table and have a new column that indicates congruency. You can do this using the custom property SDF feature, which defines new properties based on membership in sets. For an event pair property, first type event pair property and then the column head name you wish to have. In this case, we will use congruency. Then, in parentheses, type a list of pair sets divided by a comma. The value of the congruency property for a given element is the name of the first set in the list to which the element belongs. So the value of any given element will be either congruent or incongruent in this case. Now we can add the congruency property to our event pair table and view it. We need to move the table definition after the definition of the congruency property for this to work. 
Another thing that would be nice to have in this table is the response classification, even though this can be deduced from the other information. The response matching feature has already divided pairs by classification into the pair sets RM hit, RM incorrect, etc. We can make a new event pair property using these sets in the same way we did for congruency. However, this is unnecessary because presentation does this automatically with the name RM type. Therefore, we can simply add this pair property to our table. As mentioned before, SDF can be used to produce an output text file which will be saved in addition to the log file on each run of the experiment. We want to include our data table in this output file so that we have nicely formatted data about each trial for further analysis in other software. To do this we use an SDF print statement. Such statements always start with print followed by a list of items to be printed. In the case of data tables, use the name of the table followed by some arguments in parentheses. The first argument is the set print. The second argument is a string to use as a delimiter between columns. Here we use the special sequence slash t to use a tab character. The third argument is text inserted at the end of each row. The slash n sequence is a new line character. When we reanalyze, a new tab pops up that shows the output. This output would be saved to a file whenever a log file is created and saved. Note that running a scenario from the editor does not produce a log file. Looking at the output, the column headers for the table use the property names. It would be nice to instead use custom headings for the table. To do this, we can have the table print statement not print the header row by including an optional argument with the text no header row. To make the header row, we can print a string with the heading we want. A new print statement will automatically start on the following line. SDF can also be used to define numerical variables and there are a number of operators that can be used on a set as a whole. For example, you can use count to find the number of items in a set or AVG to find the average of a particular column in a set. So in our case we will use AVG to find the average reaction time for each of the congruency cases. When we reanalyze, we see the averages in the bottom left area. We can also add these numbers to the output using print statements. If we wanted to find the average reaction time for correct responses only, we first need to make the appropriate sets by testing for membership in the set RM hit. We can do something similar to get accuracy. Because of the presence of practice trials, we first need a set of main trial hits. Number definitions may involve numerical expressions in addition to set functions. 
Therefore, we can calculate the accuracy as the number of trials in the hit set divided by the total number of trials. We could calculate many other statistics in a similar way. For a complete specification of statements available in SDF and their syntax, see the Analysis Features section of the documentation.